Nothing. You lose. And now it's time for this episode of Shankity Shank. Well, it's a segment, but we might as well compact it into one mini episode at once. I mean, fuck. It's reasons, because we know what they are, right? We know what the fuck they are! Obviously! Ha <laughs> Okay, now, now, now. I don't ever watch Dr. Phil, but when I do, it's to watch spoiled pieces of shit like this be removed from their home. Extremely frightened for my granddaughter. Gabrielle is still young enough to be put on the right path. But she needs his guidance to get back on the right path and away from her immoral mother. My greatest fear is that my granddaughter will go into the same business as her mother. If things don't change quickly, my granddaughter will go down the tubes right along with her mother. Both of them need a wake-up call from Dr. Phil. Oh, no shit, they do need a wake-up call. And uh, So, obviously, tell you what they are. Um, it's a no-brainer. I, I think you really only have one reasonable choice, and that is she needs to be removed from this home at this point. Yes. Um, and, and obviously, I, I, I am prepared to offer what I think is a very constructive and positive alternative um, in offering to make available to you parents to send her to a place called Turnabout Ranch. Oh, Turnabout Ranch? And, no, that's uh, not going to do shit. Her mother needs to be put in prison. Her daughter needs to be in the full custody of the state so that she can go to a group home to learn what it's like to live with a bunch of retards who are smarter than her. And here's what they had to say. Oh, and now she's crying. The mission statement for Turnabout Ranch is real ranch, real values, and real change. Real ranch, real values, real change. Bullshit. Bullshit. You ain't gonna teach you shit. They ain't gonna teach you a goddamn thing, nah. And look at that stupid bitch crying. This is why we have abortion clinics, people. This is why we have abortion clinics. Now, in order How fucking stupid. In order for that to work, you and you must be willing to work in creating a co-parenting plan while she's <laughs> training, <laughs> training and family training that's necessary so the people that she comes home to are different than the you people You know, some mothers are not deserving of, of training of any kind. You could train them to be a good parent, and they'd be a good parent for about all three minutes, and then they'd turn right back into the shitholes that they were. Ah, yeah, man, that's right. Fucking shit. Because reasons! That this... Simultaneous with us sitting here now yeah. and your prediction is they'll remove this child from the home before dark today right absolutely yep um and good she will either be she will either be placed with a family member such as the grandmother who can then make the decision to send her to turnabout ranch yes. or she'll go into foster care uh if you don't want her but there's no way in hell they're going to allow her to stay parented by you two until you demonstrate a change in parenting skills and philosophy. So my recommendation is she goes to a positive, constructive place and do a reset on her perceptions and values while you two work very hard while she's gone to put this family on the right track. Um, and in the alternative, then we just let things take their course with DCFS. So tell me what you want to do. What are they going to do? Oh, 
Oh, I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to put her in foster care because she's stupid. They should put the mother and father in foster care too while they're at it. Obviously. And that's why we have abortion clinics, people. This segment of Savage Little Meganol brought to you by SJW Central. Let's kill some SJWs. You know that less than 10% of rapes are actually reported. Okay, where's that? The cops. Where's that? It's from all of the women's organizations. You can look it up online. You can find it through the socialized organizations that study rape. I participate with an organization that works as a rape crisis center. We base that on the number of calls. The police know based on the unofficial reports, the third party reporting, and the direct reports. This is not a secret that about 10% of rapes are reported. So, how do you know 10% of rapes are reported if the others aren't? Because those people call the women's centers, they ask for help, they seek medical attention. So they are reported. I do agree that there is stigma that I have to deal with because I am fat, but I'm, I'm actually really in celebration of my body. I find beauty and diversity. I think we come in all shapes and sizes. And the assumption that we've dealt with a lot on this show is that just because you're obese, you must overeat. You must have an eating disorder. I know that not to be the case. I know you can have a healthy relationship. Now, Mimi, you say this is misleading. Go have at it a little bit. Well, I, I certainly think that we all want to feel good about Beam ourselves. That's understandable. Um, I don't think people should feel demeaned uh, by their size. And I also couldn't agree more with the message of daily exercise. No matter what size you are, you can't you'll certainly benefit shit. from daily exercise. You can't be healthy without that. Um, but then let's talk about where we disagree. Um, look, if you want to feel good about yourself, it's it's impossible to feel good about yourself if you're doing something that's self-destructive. Also, self-destructive behaviors that result in damage or debilitation or even disfigurement to the body, that's never going to be perceived as beautiful. The, the thing is that uh, I think that the Hayes approach, the health at every size approach, has been documented to work. And it's been documented to work year after year. What do you mean work? What do you mean work? Because a health at every size is a lie. If you starve yourself no. into damage, that's unhealthy. Or if you eat yourself into damage, that's not assumptions. healthy. You're making so, a lot of assumptions. Um, that's just not. Mean. That's not true. You're making that's a like lot of saying, assumptions. That's like saying that. Weight let's being say you are a smoker. What? Let's say you're a smoker and have black oh, lungs, and you try to say that's healthy because you don't have cancer yet. Wrong. We know that the, the right, the, it is actually right. factual that obesity is dangerous, and it's connected Absolutely. to cancer, stroke, 100%. Alzheimer's. We even right. know it's connected to an increase in birth defects. So there's nothing left to debate. Maybe. It's not beautiful. It's not healthy. I well, you know, $15 an hour, first of all, as we said, it's not enough of a wage, but it is a substantial improvement, and this is what workers have put forward. Fast food workers themselves courageously took their lives into their own hands, walked out of their jobs in a one-day strike in New York City, and demanded $15 an hour. And what? that is the first step, because the economy is not going to remain static. We have to fight for affordable housing. We have to fight for better services in terms of mass transit, education, health care. And that is why we have to also talk about taxing the super wealthy and big corporations. Well, I mean, uh, of course, one government policy leads to the next. If you raise the minimum wage, then it's going to raise the rents. When it raises the rents, you're going to have to build affordable housing. When you have to build affordable housing, you have to tax people to build the affordable housing. When you tax people to build the affordable housing, people move out of the city, and you have to raise taxes on the people who remain in the city. And this is how you hollow out the economy of a major metropolitan area in the United States. Only, uh... Uh, there's a very thick line between She's apologizing being politically it. incorrect and being racist. And words matter. So when a, a community of people that has been perpetually uh, m marginalized at institutions across America over history feels offended, we should acknowledge that. And I think that these protests are a reflection of a community of minorities that feel unacknowledged and not respected. And so, Ben, I read your article today, and it was I was shocked by the language you used. Uh, you, were you were saying that it's time She's for the right call the police to right fight. now. Yeah. No, but you read his <laughs> evidence, column. Evidence, evidence, evidence. All this is is screaming and feelings. How about like a shred of evidence, even for the incidents that actually evidence. happened in Missouri reports. that drove this... Really? 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 What, where was the police report this... exactly when it came to, for example, the first N-word incident that led all of this? There was no okay, police report on any of that. In the second incident, at the N-word at the University... Fuckers following this 
still. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So, CNN, otherwise known as the Cavendish Necrophilia Network, has 957,000 600 followers. Well, you might as well say that if you include the Rothschilds. And 7,246 employees based in God knows where, probably New York shitty, New York, which ironically is where CBS is located. They have 72,000, 73,000, I should say, 73,454 followers, and 20,460 employees, if you don't count Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Speaking of New York shitty, that's exactly where NBC News is located. They have 140 and 50, 154,800 followers if you dis include, if you exclude the five most recent jackasses to become president. Now, despite being located in Bristol, Connecticut, ESPN who I'll refer to now as the Extreme Shitposting Network, has 387,850 followers and 12,000 employees if you don't count Barack Hussein Obama II, a.k.a. Barry Sotoro, because he's apparently an employee there as well. And, and, and what about what about the Burbank, California base well, I guess you might as well call that city Burr bankrupt, because that's what the fuck the whole state is. It's bankrupt. All the taxpayers are leaving. It doesn't have a fucking leg to stand on. It's going to be poorer than Zimbabwe. So Disney ABC Television Group has 208,501 followers and 5,508 employees. And I know, I, I know that a lot of you people out there are probably sympathetic towards these companies. But if you follow them or are an employee in any of these five companies, you're an idiot! Yes, yeah, CNN, CBS, ABC... NBC and ESPN may have thousands upon thousands of employees put together and millions of followers to their credit. And every single one of them is a jackass! <laughs> and now, this is Retardation! Starring everybody's favorite Blitzkrieg punching bag, a.k.a. Wolf Hitler. I mean Blitzer. Well, his last name might as well be Hitler. Because he shares his name with Hitler. And Blitzkrieg sounds a lot like Blitzer, obviously, so that's close enough. <laughs> Fuck those people at CNN. They they don't got shit. So I was watching a highlight of Wolf Blitzkrieg, which is who I'll refer to as for now on, failing miserably on the Million Dollar Celebrity Invitational. And two film actors completely blew this piece of shit out of the water. And he calls himself a journalist. This guy can't even tie his own shoes, much less get out of fucking bed in the morning. How the fuck does he get to work? Through a clown car? 
Let's begin. This multi-talented actor comedian is now back on the couch with Conan O'Brien. From the Tonight Show, please welcome Andy Richter. She won two Emmys for her work on China Beach. This fall marks her third season playing Catherine Mayfair on Desperate Housewives. Please welcome actress Nina Delaney. Ironically, the first guy ends up walking away with over $39,000 just before he gets to Final Jeopardy. With Andy Warhol, you're on the board with $400. Whoa, what is chicken? Correct. Whoa, what is uh, Britain? Yes. Whoa, what is Kobe? Kobe is right. Whoa, what are the 1940s? You got it. Who is Julia Charles? That's right. Whoa, what is Fettuccine? No. Hi, I'm Walt Blitzer, and this is the situation. Nothing but the room. We have a That affects you. I'm informed that you put an S on Julia Child's name. Child. And so we have to deduct the 800. So you're at the scores are now correct, Andy. Make your wager. No. Well, Anno David? No. What? Well, things have not worked out as well as you would hope for, I'm sure. Andy, so much faster on that signaling device today. But it's long been our policy on Celebrity Jeopardy. Hey, Wolf, well, you pronounced her last name as Childs, right? It doesn't have a goddamn S in it. It's pronounced Child, which is what you are. A man child. Fucking people are stupid. I don't even know why the fuck people even bother watching his goddamn show if they know that it's going to be full of shit. For the entirety of the show, I don't know why people buy into it. By the way, Danny Walters Jr., thanks for the cameo, buddy. Much appreciated. You want to check out his YouTube channel? I mean, you just just, just look no further than, than his YouTube channel because he's got he he posts stuff on there very very sporadically. But when he posts something, you can almost guarantee it is going to be top of the bastard line. And by top of the lean, I really mean it's going to be fucking brilliant. Now this guy might have corporalia in real life, but. Damn it if he doesn't make the Tourette's guy character believable in every sense of the word. Sometimes you just kind of feel bad for the guy. Speaking of which, my next episode of Scully Goes Wide, spoiler alert, is going to be revolving around the character of the Tourette's guy, who of course I just referenced as Danny Walters Jr. So good luck with that. Rounding off our episode of Savage Level Omega Null, we have the five most annoyingly catchy shoot a freaking bullet into your TV adverts in television history. And they all happened within the last 15 years, people, as of this recording. It's not counting all the other shit that Hollywood's going to shit out of its ass in the future for adverts. So why don't we get started? Okay. In order from least to most annoying. Number five. And I know it's going to sound very, very fucking nuts to you, but... 1-800-NUNKING-CARDS-FOR-KIDS TO GET YOUR CAR TODAY! And, and... In, in addition to it being a pop country jingle, they actually did a metal version of it. Not bad, huh? Well, 
If you're into that shit, you're probably going to want to shell out your money for a Cars for Kids benefit concert featuring the kids who starred in the original commercial. Yeah. Get used to that shit. Okay, number four. Also, you're probably not going to agree with me, but the Crestor guy who starred in a Crestor commercial wearing what we thought was the blue and orange of the Cincinnati Bengals. Or do they wear orange and black? I forget. But... In reality, he wasn't wearing the blue and orange of his favorite football team. No. This was the blue and orange that he wore to watch the Crestor football team get completely wrecked as fuck by the goddamn New England Patriots. Yes, this actually happened, people. You are not hearing this incorrectly. Your ears and eyes are not deceiving you. And Zeke Housley said it himself three weeks prior to this recording. The Crestor guy needs to be institutionalized. No, 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 he doesn't need to be institutionalized. He needs to have his balls chopped off, Harakiri style, and he needs to be shot in the face and hung. Because no institution on the planet can handle this guy, much less tolerate him. Okay, number three. It's my money, and I need it now! From the J.G. Went Worthless Company. The reason why I say J.G. Went Worthless is to point out the fact that their worthlessness is in the name of the law firm itself, G.J. Wentworth, obviously. Because J.G. Wentworth is the king of shitty, worthless abortions of advertisements. Because every advertisement that they have ever put out in the history of the firm has been absolute pissing shits. It's my money and I need it now! 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 How many fucking times are you gonna say that? God. <laughs> I'm getting choked up here. Okay, number two, head on. Apply directly to the forehead! Head on. Apply directly to the forehead! Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Available at absolutely no place whatsoever. Because it fucking sucks! I'll show you a parody of this product later, which will also serve as my endorsement package. So, if you're not into spoilers, why did you fucking watch this whole video? Because the entire video in itself, and all the series that I do on YouTube, are spoilers in of themselves. Spoilers within spoilers, within spoilers, within spoilers, within spoilers, within spoilers. Number one, 877 Cash Now! I have a structured settlement and I need cash now! <laughs> and, and, and this guy, look what he, look what this person wrote! It's Opie Bay, wrote five months prior to this recording. I love signing that 877 Cash Now song. So, in other words, and this is how I responded, you can translate the entire Wagnerian JG went worthless jingle in American Sign Language? Impressive. Because if, if you're going to make a jingle more annoying than head-on you have to be the guy running the advertisement department at JG went worthless because everything that they do advertisement wise sucks and I'm pretty sure that JG went despite being advertised as a lawyer 
isn't actually one. I mean, not that it means anything, but it's worth pointing out. And there's your top five. And we're going to end this video. And today's episode of Savage Level Omega Null has been brought to you by Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Shotgun. Applied directly to the forehead. Then pull the trigger and watch your life literally go up in smoke. Of course, not that it matters or anything, but you need to know the bastard truth or you need to kill yourself. Simple. It's also been sponsored by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is paid in part by suckers like you. Now get out. This video is over. Get off of my fucking channel if you don't like what you see. But if you like what you see, then feel free to stay on as long as you want. I'm here all night. Thank you and good night. Laters. That means this video is over, so go to another one. It's just not easy.